Welcome to the Prep Athletics Podcast. This is Corey Heights. Some battles. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if they got us. If they did, maybe. maybe. So you will get better as a player during that year. So it was kind of exciting. Like, oh, yeah, somebody wants me. Welcome to this week's edition of the Prep Athletics Podcast. My name is Corey Heights, and I am the host of the podcast and the founder of Prep Athletics. And on this week's show, we are going to do uh, the first in a new series on Prep Athletics success stories. And my blog at prepathletics.com has a lot of articles on here, and this one has been the most read article since we uh, established the website. And it's about a kid named Louis Tang who came from Taiwan and could not speak English at all to ending up playing D1. So I'm going to quickly tell you that story uh, because he is one of the kids that have shown uh, the most resolve and grit, and he put that into action, and now he is playing in college for free. So I first met Lewis when he was a ninth grader in Taiwan. I was helping my friend, Coach Dave Taylor, coach the all-Taiwan camp for Nike, and Lewis was in ninth grade. He was the youngest player there. He looked scared. He was skinny. And my friend Jerry Ho said, Lewis is one of those players that we want to send to the United States. And I tried talking to him. He didn't understand me, just had that gaze look in his eye, as we would if we were in China or Taiwan trying to speak their language. And he just wasn't ready on the court yet, even though he was very talented for a ninth grader. So I said, let's have him do the ninth grade or 10th grade year in Taiwan, and then we'll get him over to the States, have him work on his English. So during his 10th grade year in Taiwan, played in a good program. Uh, He was a member of the junior national team that uh, went overseas to play uh, for the FIBA World Championships. And um, he got his score up good enough. So we got him into a prep school in uh, the mid-Atlantic. And right before we were getting ready to go there, they said, you know what? Uh, His TOEFL score, which is a score to determine how good your English is, it's just not high enough. We don't want to do it anymore. And I'm not going to throw that prep score under the bus because this was the president making that decision. He'd already been accepted. Coach was ready. Admissions were ready. This president, uh, which is very untypical, made this command decision. So we were scrambling uh, right before the school year started, me and that coach, to find a good spot for him. And we couldn't find anything um, that was going to take on a kid at this late with the aid he needed to uh, especially if he didn't speak much English. So he found a school in Front Royal, Virginia, which was a Chinese school that specialized in taking 8th grade Chinese students. they teach them English, and then for ninth grade, uh, they would place them into a U.S. prep school. So Lewis, even though he had just finished 10th grade, he, through a partnership and sponsorship with the school, um, he went there for a full year, right? So he was the youngest among a bunch of 8th graders, and he busted his butt all the time. Uh, on English, on learning his vocabulary, on taking the TOEFL score, and he bumped it up and had a great year academically. Now, basketball-wise, he did not play for an organized team. He trained every day. He lifted weights on his own. You know, He got prescriptions from some of his coaches on what workouts to do. Sometimes he'd do open run with a little D3 school uh, that was nearby, but he sacrificed this year to make sure he was going to be better off and have a better prep school uh, after all this English education. So after this year was done, we found a school for him after making a few phone calls in the WCAC. Now the WCAC is the Washington Catholic Basketball League. That's what I used to coach in when I was at Gonzaga. This also includes DeMatha, Paul VI, St. John's, O'Connell. These are schools that are perennially in the top 25 national rankings and we reached out to St. Mary's they had an international program they had host families and we got them in there and they had a new coach named Walter Booth uh, who we knew and um, a couple other D1 players in the team one guy went to Denver one guy went to Boston College and we knew Lewis was going to be playing against top-notch competition every night Uh, he spent two years there getting a 3.5 at at a school (laughs) that is you know where English is his second language and ended up uh, getting a lot of D2 offers and a lot of um, uh, a couple D1 offers too. Now, Lewis is 6'5. He's very long, plays hard every single play, can slam it on, he can hit a three, very versatile. And um, he got an offer from VMI, right? I knew Coach Earl from his days back at Navy, so I gave him a call and they saw him at a couple camps and loved him. And we took him down on a visit, explored his other options, and he decided to commit. Now, 
I went to a military school, which was the Air Force Academy, and I knew what a culture shock that was. And I was a little bit worried that Lewis, you know, might not be able to handle basic training or everything, but he thrived there. Uh, there were nine other kids there from Taiwan who weren't athletes, and he said, if they can do it, I can most certainly do it. So freshman year, he makes it through basic training. He thinks it's just kind of funny, all the yelling and all the military stuff they got to do. Uh, he played good minutes as a freshman. He was starting as a sophomore until he blew his knee out. And last year, 2021-22 uh, season, he played sparingly as a junior, just trying to get over his injuries. And now he's going to be a senior uh, in a D1 program, getting a great degree when he finishes. So think about that. I get reached out to every day uh, by kids who want to play D1, who speak English, who have a lot of opportunities before them, who would never think of giving up a year of high school to you know, get where they need to go. And Lewis Tang did that. And I've known Lewis for so long. He's been to our house. He's part of our, the Prep Athletics family and nicest kid. But that's the kind of grit D1 coaches are looking for. So um, just think about this. You going to China, not speaking a lick of it, taking a year off of basketball just to learn the language and then getting great GPA and then going to the highest level division of Chinese basketball. That's a big, a big hurdle to cross. So anyway, that is the first of the Prep Athletic Success Stories. We'll do more of these in the future. If you like what you're doing, go ahead, or what we're doing, go ahead and subscribe on whatever podcasting platform you listen to. Uh, iTunes is a popular one. We get most of our listens through there. And if you like this, a review would be much appreciated, and it won't take long at all. You can also subscribe to the YouTube channel and not miss one there. And sign up for the newsletter at prepathletics.com. Any questions you have about the prep school world, feel free to email, text me, call me, um, and all that information is on my website. So thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next week.